Welcome to vblog 54, our last vblog for Business 135, fun with Excel and math. Hey, we're so, this is a sinking feeling, it's been so much fun, and now this is our last vblog. Uh, sinking fun, I guess, is an appropriate thing to end on. Hey, but sinking fun is just a fancy way to say I'm saving up to have a bunch of money in the future so I can do something with that money whether it's to buy something or pay off some debt. Hey, let's read this little question at the top. Pete's Coffee Incorporated needs to pay off a $100,000 loan in 10 years, so they got to save up for it. In fact, get this, a lot of loans have little, um, in the contract it says you have to set up a sinking fund. If the interest rate for the sinking fund is 8% compounded annually, what is the periodic payment Pete's must make at the end of each year? So the idea here is... They got to put a little payment in each year, or a big payment in each year, to save up to pay off this loan. That's what he, the the uh, lender puts that into the contract, and the uh, person who borrows the money agrees to it and signs the contract. But the lender puts it in there to make sure that they have uh, get their money. All right, so we got to figure out our details. I've already listed them. Oh, the amount we want in the future: hundred thousand dollars. The regular payment is what we're question, 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 question. Annual rate, 8%. Oh, and this is an annual, so we put 1 there. Years, 10. I did the calculation here. This is a really hard one. Whoops. Really hard one. I did, uh, oops. Never mind. I just took 8% divided by 1. And here I took 10 divided by 1. This is an ordinary annuity, so it's zero. Again, sinking fund is a fancy way to say, hey, I'm saving up for the future. So this is going to be a future value problem because uh, this is the future value we want. The annuity part of it is the periodic payment. That's what we're trying to figure out, an equal payment with equal time intervals between each payment. So we're solving for payment equals PMT. Open parentheses, the rate, hey, that's our period rate. And we do want to set it up this way because what if we um, found a different offer that was uh, semi-annual or quarterly? We just change this number right here, and this would update. So that's why we have this one here. Comma, NPER, that's the total number of periods. Comma, the present value, we don't have any. Um, if we had some money in the bank to initially save up, it would be the present value. Comma, the future value. And we're going to put a negative here just to uh, uh, make this come out positive here, the, the PMT. Comma, and the type is zero. Close parentheses. And then enter. $6,902. Wow, so there it is. We have to save $6,902.95. So, I double clicked right there because it wasn't showing up big enough. And that, we, that would have had to have been wrap text. If you right click, go down to format cells, it had to have been under alignment wrap text or it wouldn't have gone down to the next line. Hey, and by the way, that's always uh, center across selection, not merge and center. Hey, let's read our answer in words. Pete's Coffee needs to pay off a $100,000 loan in 10 years. If the interest rate for the sinking fund is 8% compounded annually, the periodic payment that Pete must make at the end of each year is $6,902.95. Let's look at our next sinking fund problem. Hey, this is a two-step problem, and this is common. This is about buying. We need to save up to buy for a piece of equipment. However, the little uh, wrinkle here, the little complication is, if you are saving up to buy something in the future, I had to actually pause there just for a moment. Uh, where were we? Let's see. Oh, yeah, we're saving up to buy a piece of equipment. Now, here's the deal. If you're going to buy something in five years, is there something called inflation? Do prices go up? Yes, they do. So oftentimes what you have to do is you have to go look. And in this case, uh, this is Ajax Coal Company, and they're planning to buy this Caterpillar tractor for coal mine. And all they have is the current price. They don't know how much it's going to cost in, uh, let's see, how many years? 
four years. So they're going to plan and buy this in four years. They do not know how much it's going to cost in four years. However, they can get an estimate of price increase or inflation. So the whole trick to this problem, we're going to do the same exact future value amount and figure out what the payments are that we need to put in the bank to save up for this thing. But before we do that here, we have to take this amount, which is today's price, and figure out how much it's going to, because this is tractor right now, but we need the tractor price in four years. So what do we do? Uh, we use our lump sum future value formula we learned from chapter nine. So let's go ahead and do that. The present value of the tractor is 758000. The uh, regular payments, that's not what we're trying to figure out here. We're trying to figure out what it cost in four years, right? The annual interest rate, aha, this is not an interest, this is a price increase, so that's 6%. And that's fine. If you have this lump sum present value amount, and you want to find out with inflation how much it's worth in uh, four years, then you use the inflation rate. Enter, number of compounding periods per year, let's see what it's say in four years currently sells, but the um, price increase is 6% per year compounded semi-annually. Remember, semi means half, annual means year, so half a year. How many half a years are there in a year? Dos, two. Years, four. I've already calculated the period rate and total number of periods, and this is going to be an uh, ordinary annuity. So we come down here. And you could actually look, I put the little formula, the, the original formula, if you did it by hand, future value equals whatever the present value is times 1 plus the annual interest divided by number of compound periods raised to the n times x, or just the future value. So I'm going to do equals FE. The rate, the period rate, comma, total number of periods, uh, this is going to be 8, because 4 times 2 is 8, comma, no payment here, this is just a lump sum, comma, what is the present value? Minus that amount there. Comma, the type, uh, zero. Comma, or uh, clo clo close parentheses. There it is. We have been very clever here, and our boss is so happy because we had today's price, we knew the inflation, and we could and can figure out what it'll be uh, worth in, or what the price will be in four years. Now the rest of it is straightforward, but I'm going to click in this cell because we're going to have to use this amount in a calculation here. So I'm going to come up here, and this is dollars, cents, dollars and cents. So we're going to round it, R-U-N-D, close parentheses. Come to the end, comma, two, close parentheses, enter. Now, um, we can read the rest of this problem. Ajax decides to set up a sinking fund through Carla Fresquez at Merrill Lynch in order to save up to buy the tractor. Find the amount of each payment into the sinking fund. Each payment, right? <coughs> Sounds like an annuity, sorry. If annual payments are made and the money is expected to earn 8% compounded annually. All right. The trick here is... We know the future value amount. Oh, the amount we need to have in our bank account at the end of four years is this amount. So I'm going to up here say equals this amount right there. And we've rounded this amount down here, so we're good. The present value, we don't have any present value. We're, we, we're trying to find this, the annual payment. So we're going to put question. Okay. The annual rate is 8%. The number of compounding periods. Now, let's see. In order to save up by the tractor, find the amount of each payment in the sinking fund if annual payments are made. So annual means one period per year. Right? So that makes, uh, oh, and then our four years. So we're going to put a four here. That makes our period rate 0 0.08 or 8% and our number of compounding periods Four. This is an ordinary annuity, so I have a zero there. PMT needed to save to buy the tractor. Ready? This is a future value uh, where we're solving for, or future value of an annuity where we're solving for payment. Equals PMT, open parentheses. Period rate, comma, NPER, which is that 
4, comma, the present value we don't have, so to skip over it, comma, the future value, oh, we do know that. And I'm going to put a minus here, just so this, actually, if we didn't put a minus here, this is, ta I've, I've taught you this whole time just to keep all the numbers positive, but I am going to show you that in, if you were doing an actual finance problem, this amount is not going to be negative because if you're saving up, the PMT is negative. So when you put amount into a bank, each month that's money coming out of your wallet. But at the end, when you stop putting money into the account with your wallet and you go to take it out, that's a positive. So we're going to do this one. This is actually a positive, so don't, we don't need a negative. Now, if you put a uh, negative there, it's fine. It just makes the amount in the cell positive, which most people do in, in uh, a spreadsheet like this just because they don't like to see the, the negative amount. But we're going to do it this way, and it will pop up negative, which is exactly right because this function is so smart. It knows cash flow. It knows that the money is actually coming out of your wallet, comma. And then the type zero, close parentheses. There it is, and that's um, currency format. Those parentheses are ac on, uh, from accounting. So I'm going to click on that cell and control one. I'm going to come over to number. I'm going to click on currency, and I'm going to click this right here. So we have a choice between how we display our negatives. Click on that, click OK. There it is, the amount that's coming out of our wallet at the end of each year, so we can save up to buy this tractor, is 213.090.96. Now, there's two couple ways to check it. If you scroll all the way to the end, you can click on sync 3 and, which means answer, no, sync 2 and, and you can click right there and see I did the actual math part of it. And then over here, I did future value and I did some math there. So you can see how to actually do that math for a present value calculation. All right, we have one more sheet tab, one more exciting thing. I'm going to have to scroll all the way back now. So we're still on sync two. Fingers crossed it does. I had to amend that formula. After taking into consideration the price increase of the tractor, if we want to set up a sinking fund to buy the tractor in four years, we would need to make annual payments of, and then notice that's got the little format there for accounting, which is parentheses mean negatives. But $213,090.96. Hey, one last little thing here. Because guess what? If you have a sinking fund, what does that mean? You're going to put this amount into a bank account. But what happens in the bank account? It actually earns interest. So we're going to look at a sinking um, fund table. This is actually universally known as an amortization table. You can use the same kind of calculations for... Uh, home mortgage loan payments, sinking funds, all sorts of things. In accounting, you do the effective interest method of bond amortization, income taxes uh, for interest are calculated this way. And the idea, this is, a, again, a sinking fund table. The idea is boom, 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 boom. We have four payments. But for us, we want to calculate the interest earned and keep a running balance so we see that we actually do make it up to that um, amount at the end. So let's just do this one at a time. The first payment we put in the bank, right? And on the day we put it in the bank, how much interest is there? None, because it's just sitting in there. Just the, you just put it in, so one minute it's gone by and you haven't earned anything. So we're going to put a zero there. But what's the amount in the um, account so far? Equals this right there. That's it. All right, so that's the first line. Now, what about here? Remember, this amount here, this is what's in the uh, account balance, right? This has been sitting there for one whole year. So we get one whole year of interest. So watch here in this cell, we're going to say equals this amount right here times, and I'm actually going to do a round here, R-O-U-N-D, and then come to the end here. It's the balance, the amount that's been sitting in the account, times, and this is, that's not formatted correctly, nor is that. Look at all this. That's silly. I'm going to click Escape and come over here. 
annual rate, I'm going to control 1 and change it to percentage. Click OK. Compounding periods, and we need to get rid of that. Remember what the keyboard shortcut for getting rid of all the format? We saw when we did all that beautiful date math. Control Shift tilde. How about years? Control Shift tilde. That one's fine. Number of periods. Control Shift tilde. Oh, that's much better. Whew. All right, let's calculate our interest equals round open parentheses. This amount that's been sitting in the uh, account for the whole period times, and this is going to be our a period rate right here, our 8%. So we, well, this is annual, so it's the same as that right there. But we're going to click on that one, comma 2, close parentheses. Wow, that's not right. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, 213. Wow. I'd love to leave 213,000 and get 17,000 in interest. Wow. Now, this is going to be equals uh, the one above plus the interest that we just earned plus the amount we just put in. How do you like that? Enter. Now, next period, what happens? Remember, it's we, we have now this amount plus the interest. Remember, we added that, that, and that. This was the amount sitting from the first year. This was the interest after the first year, and this was our second payment. So when we add all those together, that's the amount sitting in the account. So when they go to calculate interest the next year, they actually use all of that. So we're going to earn interest on interest. Ready? Equals round, open parentheses, Click on the amount that was sitting in the account times our period rate, comma, two, close parentheses. And I'm going to hit tab. Wow. So the, the, uh, after the one, two, second year, uh, after, the, after three years, actually, 35,000 interest we earned. That is beautiful. So equals the one above plus the interest. They just plopped into our account, plus the amount we just put into the account. Enter. Wow. So we're, we're really starting to grow here towards our 960. All right. Our final calculation equals round, open parentheses, the amount in the account for the whole period, times our period rate, comma, two, close parentheses. Tab. Ding, ding. And here it is. It better equal this amount up here. This is, this is exciting. Equals. The amount that was sitting in the account, plus the interest you just gave us, plus the amount you just put in the account, because this is a an, uh, end annuity or ordinary annuity. And there it is. That's the amount. So that's a way of seeing with any kind of regular payment, putting it in and earning interest, how to calculate the interest. Now, there was a much faster way to, 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 to do these with sal mixed cell references and stuff like that. However, when we first do this, it, it's kind of helpful to see how they calculate each one, and this is the way interest works. Um, it's always um, whatever was sitting in the account for the period times the period rate. And that amount sitting in the account, like for instance right here, that has a lot of interest in it. So we're earning interest on interest. That's how come. Actually, if we add this up, let's go ahead and do that. Alt equals. See, we put in 852000 but we got after four years, 960. So the difference between those is uh, interest and in particular compound interest. All right, uh, that's it for this uh, Business 135. See you next class.